What's up guys, David Nerd 1, 2 and 2, and it's List Day. Ah yes, List Day. And today we're uh, we're gonna do the second part of my most mostest cards of the year. And these are the top 10 best cards of 2019. If you guys missed part one, the worst cards of 2019, I'll have Ryan this way, this way. Stick one of those card thingies up there and I'll also stick it at the end of the video so that uh, you guys can get to that one too. And uh, as far as the rules for the list go, as long as the card premiered here in 2019, the card's fair game, it doesn't matter what set it was in, uh, as long as it wasn't a reprint, uh, and the card was good. For part one, I know I made a point to say that uh, we got a lot of bad sets this year, so that's why the format's been rather stale. However, that was a bit misleading when I said that. Sure, the sets were really bad, but what was really the, the linchpin of that whole uh, infinite Sky Striker format was that it wasn't the sets were bad in that they were releasing terrible cards, it was just they were releasing bad decks, or at least lackluster strategies. A lot of the archetypes to premiere in the last couple of main sets and even some of the deck building sets have just been really lackluster, but that does not mean the sets had bad cards in, in, in their totalness. If actually, and the 10 cards you're about to see actually definitely uh, disprove that. What's making the format really stale is not only are we not getting fantastic decks, however the problem is all of these cards are mostly very generic, which means they just bolster the power of existing decks, they don't make new decks good. It, so that's why our format's kind of stale. But there were still good cards this year. So without further ado, these are the best cards of 2019. Number 10 is Signet Mining. This spell card says you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard to add one level 4 or lower Cybers monster from your deck to the hand. You can only activate one of these per turn. This is a fantastic spell that's a lot like our you know, reinforcements of the RB, but for Cybers monsters. The card would be a lot higher on the list if we had more good Cybers decks. Uh, really, the only relevant deck we'd want to really talk about is uh, Salamangrates. <laughs> However, um, even though the Link Vrain era is coming to an end, that does not mean we will not be getting more Cyber monsters in the future. Just like how even though the Synchro era ended, we were still getting Psychic monsters, it's probably safe to say that we will be getting a Cyber deck sometime in the future, most likely. And if that is to occur and the deck is good, then obviously this card gets better. But as it stands, it's a good number 10. Ib, the World Chal's Justicar. This level 5 water synchro tuner effect monster has the following effect. For this card synchro summon, you can treat one normal World Chalice monster as the tuner for its summon. Which is handy, just, you know, that way you can put all those normal World Chalice guys to some use, as well as the Geminis. Neat. You can only use each of her following effects once per turn each. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can add one World Chalice card from your deck to your hand. Also, if this Synchro Summon monster is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can Special Summon one World Chalice monster from your graveyard or your deck to the field. Uh, why is this card so good? Synchro Summoning is inherently negative card advantage, so the fact that she mitigates her own summon by just getting other cards out of your deck uh, is just really good. And the fact that she is a tuner monster as well means that there are just more options to use her for extra deck plays, so her second effect will definitely activate. She isn't the flashiest card on the list, but she is certainly a wombo combo extender, and in the right deck, she is fantastic. Number eight is Borlode Savage Dragon. Yeah, we have we have a couple synchros on this list. That's actually kind of impressive. When this card is synchro summoned, you can equip one of your Link monsters in your graveyard to this card. It gains attack equal to half the original attack of the Link monster equipped, and you can put Boral counters on this card equal to the Link rating of that equipped monster. Now, I've said in the past that counters are bad, and they mostly normally are, but this, this card actually does something with them that's pretty good. Once per turn, as a quick effect, you can remove a Boral counter from this card when your opponent activates a card or effect and you can negate the activation of that card or effect. Being a 3k level 8 dragon, <laughs> there's a lot you can do with this, a lot of decks can play this, he is a generic synchro monster after all, and uh, if you make him with any kind of large link monster equipped to him, you get plenty of negates. I kind of like the idea of this where he's a really good monster, he gives you plenty of free negates, but he has a limited amount of uses, kind of like uh, an XE monster has a limited amount of uses. It's just, it's just neat, it, it's, a, it's a good way to balance the card, but still make him very strong. Number seven is Pot of Indulgence. Uh, uh. 
I'm really enjoying Konami R&D's uh, card design lately with these generic power draw cards. With things like this and Pot of Desires, they've managed to figure out a way to make a card a true plus one in card advantage, but still give it a weighty cost so it's not just free like Pot of Greed. At the start of your main phase, so before you do anything else, you, you can't play anything else, this needs to be your first action, you can banish three or six face down monsters in your extra deck face down to draw one card for every three banished. So ideally you'd want to banish six cards from your extra deck to draw two, making it a plus one. And then for the rest of the turn, you can't draw by card effect. And the fact that you can't draw by card effect for the rest of the turn means that uh, Exodia can't, uh, can't abuse this. That seems to be the, the biggest, uh, biggest thing around these power cards like Desires and this thing, because you, you want to give us a good draw card, but you want to make it so that Exodia can't use it, because you don't want cheese ball strategies to win, you want people to really play Yu-Gi-Oh! So, yes, Extravagance in the right deck. Number six are, uh, you really could pick any th of those three Megaton promos, but uh, Nibiru, the, the Primordial Being, is probably the best of the three, even though they're all actually <laughs> really good, and all could probably take this spot on the list. But uh, let's, let's talk about Nibiru for a second. During the main phase, it's not your opponent's main phase, it's just the main phase, so potentially you could summon this on your turn. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how, but you could. If your opponent normal or special summoned five or more times this turn, quick effect, you can tribute all face-up monsters possible on the field and then summon this thing to your field and summon a big token to your opponent's field. That token's attack and defense are equal to the combined attack and defense of all the tributed monsters. So if you're not careful, your opponent will end up with a token with big number. If used at the right time, your opponent probably had a bunch of link monsters, which means that that thing's defense is going to be zero, so if you give them the token in defense mode, you probably could, you know, deal with it. Big number! The tribute is part of the effect resolution, it's not part of the cost, so uh, if your opponent negates it, um, uh, nothing happens. But at worst case scenario, this is forcing your opponent to deal with it, because it is such an amazing board nuke that if your opponent just lets it ride, then they're going to lose all their card advantage. And there's nothing quite as trolly as asking your opponent how many times they've summoned this turn, or count their summons. Okay, that's one, two, just a, just a really freak amount. You don't even need this in your hand to do that. <laughs> that might be considered, is that considered note-taking? I don't know. Big number. And number five is going to be Nibiru's greatest enemy, Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess. This Link 4 monster made with two plus monsters with different names except tokens. Ah, oh, love two plus Link 4s. They're easy to make. You don't have to have a bunch of dudes on board. Only two dudes. Link twos, but only two. Our, her effect benefits being made with more guys. But even still, it's nice to have the option. You can only control one of her. Probably good, because uh, she's really strong. Hence being on the list. Starting at zero, she gains 800 attack for every monster you made her with. So, in theory, you're probably making her with roughly three guys. So she's sitting at uh, 2400. N not big number. But, okay. Once per chain. <laughs> Oof. Once per chain. Uh-oh. Oh, no! You can make this card lose exactly 800 attack, and if you do, you can negate the activation of a monster effect. So yeah, that is why she is the the bane of Nibiru. The fact that she's not once per turn, but only once per chain means uh, as long as she's got attack points in multiples of 800, she's got negates. She's like a extra deck version of, uh, what's it called? Light and Darkness Dragon. Again, it has to be exactly 800 she loses, so you can only, uh, you can't boost her by anything but 800 attack increments if you want to get extra negates. I just really like the dynamic between Appaloosa and Nibiru, this cat and mouse that they play, because you want to wait to use Nibiru to hit your opponent at the opportune time once they've invested a lot of resources into their board so they don't just make something else after you, you hit them with the big token. But if you wait too long, your opponent's going to slap this thing down, and then uh, now they'll just negate it. And then that turns Nibiru's effect into reveal this card in your hand and make Appaloosa lose 800 attack. <laughs> Which is decidedly worse than its effect normally is. It's just really cool. I like it. It's good, good technical play. The order of this list was really hard because all these cards are fantastic. They're fantasmic. The next card's... Fan fantastical Dragon Phantasme. Good card, stupid name. Artwork's cool, it looks like a combination of Thanos and a, a, a Zealot from S StarCraft. You must construct additional pylons. If your opponent special summons a Link monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Whew, nice. Then draw cards equal to the amount of Link monsters they control plus one, and then shuffle back cards equal to the number of Link monsters they control. So you're always getting a plus one, no matter what's going on. Uh, it's a hand trap that draws you cards. He's like just a a big maxi. 
Maxie's stronger, but he's a bigger body, so, you know, it's, it's, it's give or take. But not only that, uh, he does have a decent effect while he's on board. If your opponent activates uh, a card or effect that targets a card you control, you can discard one card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. So he, he has a, a, a nice negate ability as well. He's like a, a walking uh, magic jammer, kind of? Nah, I'm trying to think. It's like Spell Shield Type 8, except Spell Shield Type 8 doesn't discard if it's a targeted, eh, whatever. He draws you cards, he summons himself, he has a negate. This card's, <laughs> card's really good. It's why he's so expansive. Big number. And the, the really good part about him is, presumably you're summoning on your opponent's turn, the fact that he cycles cards out of your deck means you can dig for your other hand traps. So your opponent is going to have like all of these multi-layered things they need to deal with while they're trying to build their board. They summon some Link Monsters, you now have a body on board, uh, they try to target something, you get a negate, uh, and you've drawn cards, so they might now have to run into an Ash Blossom or a Ghost Ogre or something, or like a DD Crow or Effect Veiler or whatever. So like, your opponent is having to deal with progressively more annoying things <laughs> be because of, of one activation of Thanos boy here. This guy's really good. If it wasn't for my rule that banned and limited cards get chunked up to the top of the list because if they're banned, they must be good logic, normally stands true. Like, change of heart is banned. It's really good. Delinquent duo is banned because it's really good. However, we do run into things like Time Seal where it itself isn't particularly strong, but it's used in cheesy crap, but it's still banned. But on the whole, if the card's limited or banned, it's probably better than every other card in the game, comparatively, because it's on the ban list. And that's the logic I'm sticking with. But uh, if we didn't, if we weren't doing that, this card would be number one. The Girsu, the Orcus of Evening Star. Badass artwork, badder ass name, fantastic XC monster. Yeah, at the end of the Link Vrains era, one of the best cards, a Synchro, and one of the other ones is the XC monster. What a strange year it's been. This Dark Machine XC monster is made of two level 8 monsters, but it also has a fun summoning condition where you can use Orcus Link monsters as material as well. It's kind of like uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity, you can just slap over Nova. That's easy summoning conditions for you. You can only special summon one of these guys per turn. Uh, there's a reason why they have a limit though. If a card you control would be destroyed by battle or card effects, you can detach a material from this card instead. Those instead abilities are really, really good because they are not an activated effect, they happen upon the resolution. So if you were to activate something like Dark Hole, uh, once Dark Hole attempts to resolve to destroy everything, all it ends up doing is just detaching a material from this card. It's just doing something instead of the normal resolution. But that, uh, that layer of protection is just a neat to have. What we really care about is his other two effects that happens when he is special summoned. You can attach a banished machine monster to this card as material, which is nice, because we did say special summon, not XC summoning. So if you were to like, I don't know, bring it back from the grave or something, he can get material, which is good because XC monsters that are resurrected tend to not have material because that's not how it works. So it's cool that he's got a, that effect, I guess. But uh, now nah, we care about the, the other one. You can send one card of your opponent controls to the graveyard. It's a send, not a destroy, and it doesn't target. It, you choose upon like resolution of the effect. Again, you do something with this card upon the resolution of an ability. Really good because it's hard and annoying to stop because your opponent doesn't know what you're going to send. I mean, they might have a good idea because if they have like a really good card on board, obviously that's what you're getting rid of. But from a from in a bubble, your opponent doesn't know what you're hitting, necessarily. So it's, it's hard to play around. It's awkward and weird. And you can, like, do it every turn, <laughs> as long as you have a way to summon it. That's really strong! This card's good. That was really good. Number two, Electric Boogaloo. Salaman Great Gazelle. He is currently limited to one, which is what makes him number two. However, uh, you could... Obviously, uh, he seems a little bit outclassed by some of the other cards on the list. However, you could make the point that he is representing uh, Salads and the Salad Structure deck as a whole. So therefore, his number two on the list is actually a little more justified. If a Salad monster is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this thing from your hand. And if this thing is normal or special summoned, you can, you can dump a Salad card out of your deck to the graveyard. So he's a free body on board. He helps set up your graveyard. The card is not only an extender, but is also an engine. That's just really good and explains why they'd put this to one because it, it would be, it really inhibits the deck by doing so. Salads are just an interesting link control deck, which is cool when you consider that a lot of other link decks in a sense they have come out have been nothing but just, you know, aggro spam decks. And it's like super cheap, except for the sign at minings. If, if not for this card, I, I don't think sign at mining would be on the list, but so th that's the other thing, I guess. 
All right, we got some honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. There's actually a lot of honorable mentions this time because, like I said, the decks we got were kind of lousy, but the generic cards we got are fantastic, and there was a lot more than 10. First, we got Mystic Mine because, uh, it's annoying as hell to play against, I know, but to say that it's not very good is 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 ridiculous. It's a field spell that's basically like, you know, like like skill drain. It's just really good. It's super searchable and powerful in the deck that it was in. It was a really good anti-meta strategy, which I know, again, they're annoying to play against, but formats kind of need anti-meta in them. It, it helps diversify the format, keeps the tier one players on their toes. We, we need silver bullet decks. Uh, so it keeps things it keeps things balanced and in check. So. Mystic Mind might be annoying, but it, it kind of needs to exist. Gizmac, uh, he's just really good. He's kind of like boneless fairy tale snow, but he's got a bigger body. That's neat. And in the deck that you play him in, he's, he's good. He's good. He's, he's cool. I like him. Chaos Dragon Levy Air. Uh, yeah, this is a, another good card. We're getting an ulti print of him in the OTS 12. That's really cool. And uh, for the Chaos variant of Thunder Dragons, I guess, or just a Chaos deck in general, he's probably like better than BLS because you don't have to use a dark and a light. You could use a combo of the two, but if you do use a mix, he gets more effects. So that's just really cool. He's a good card. And last but not least, IP Mascarana. Mascarana? Masquerade. Painted faces on parade. Ugh. There's a bit of debate in the Discord whether this should be on the list or uh, Ib should be on the list. It was either Ip or Ib. Take your pib. <laughs> that was stupid. Personally, um, the Discord actually kind of landed on uh, Ib, but I think IP is, she's certainly fantastic, and if you had to pick who's best girl, it's, it's definitely her, because that artwork, though. Wow! But I think she's a cool Link, too. She bestows abilities on the stuff you make with her. That's just cool. Plus, you know, her quick effect summon on your opponent's turn, shenanigans, is just also neat. She's a very powerful card. It definitely, definitely uh, one of the better cards this year. And moving forward, she'll probably only get better, so... Uh, and before we get to number one, just a few uh, sponsor time stuff. The first sponsor is Metamats. If you guys want a custom cloth play mat, you can use my cold troll the Meta cold cold. <laughs> you can buy, you can mute my mind in there. You can use my code troll the Meta to get ten percent off your play mat. Uh, they're really cool. I got a lot of awesome ones. Where's that Keyforge one that I was using? Like, look how cool this is. This is so rad. Thank you, Metamats. If you guys want stuff like this. Check them out. Also, the other uh, the other one is TCG Player. Uh, if you guys want any of these cards, use my uh, link in the description. And you guys can get you just get a good deal on them. And unlike the last list, these are cards you'd actually want. <laughs> it's also brought to you by viewers like you. Uh, please join the Discord so you guys can uh, help make these lists. Especially if you see a card on here that should have been on the list and not on a mention or whatever, just get in there and get dirty, get arguing. It's fun, it kind of. Al's got Patreon and the Facebook and all the other hooey. So if you guys want to support the channel, that's awesome. And it would mean a lot to me. And if, if not, just uh, a, a, a like or subscribe if you're not subscribed. Also really, really does help the channel too, especially now that the YouTube landscape is an absolute mess. And number one, due to my st rules I'm really starting to get annoyed with, Guard Dragon Agra Pain, because it's banned, so it's got to be number one. This one definitely falls into the, like, somewhere between Delinquent Duo and, and Time Seal, where it's like, it's not on the list for a stupid reason, but it's also not absurdly broken, it's just really, really good. And what does Agra Pain do? You cannot special summon except Dragon Monsters in a guard dragon deck that is not really a restriction it's just you know mitigating the chaos during your main phase you can special summon one dragon monster from your extra deck to a extra deck monster zone or a main monster zone that two link monsters point to it's just a free body from your extra deck when you're making a big dumb board with guard dragons this is so fantastic because it's just a free guy free guys are good in this game the more cards the better that's how you win it's arrows are good and it's like two dragon monsters. That's so hard to make. It's part of your guard dragon wombo combo, and when you lose it, like it is now that it's banned, it really does hurt that strategy. All right, guys, that was the list. I'm starting to lose my voice because I'm, uh, I'm actually a little sick still. Damn it. <clears throat> but I managed to get through this. I managed to get through these cards. And if you guys enjoyed the list, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you didn't, be sure to dislike comment and don't unsubscribe don't do that but whatever the the interaction is good for the youtube algorithm <laughs> remember guys if you don't troll the meta who will i'll see you guys next time
Well, looks like they made it through the video. But you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.